Okay, welcome back. It's Friday, 29th of January. We've had tons of questions on various different social channels uh, for what exactly is going on. What is this situation with Robin Hood and all the brokers and what's going on with GameStop and Wall Street bets? So got the main man back again, Eddie Donmez. Eddie, how's it going? Hey, uh, what a week. Yeah, I mean, incredible. But look, I mean, this is definitely much more up up your street than mine. So I thought rather than me try to explain this, you're going to do a far better job than I can. So get us up to speed. What exactly has been happening uh, in terms of what happened last night with the brokers? Yeah, so it's been an incredible week. Uh, and actually Robin Hood have take a, taken a spectacular step in actually banning the trading of these retail favorites like AMC, like GameStop, um, because of the vol volatility. Um, so really in incredible steps that they've taken and this is and they've actually been having to draw on credit lines and things like this from the major wall street banks that emit this uh, volatility um so in terms of uh who's allowed to trade and things like that the funds and uh, hedge funds are still allowed to trade the stock uh and they are most likely making a killing now the the shares were down so much up to 50 60 percent in some of the the names so amc was down 53 percent on this announcement cost was down 43 percent so these average people the retail traders that were making a lot of money are now potentially losing a lot of money so uh the funds are not locked out uh but the retail people are so so, so in kind of basic terms then what what triggered this action? Why did they have to do what they did, say Robin Hood, for example? Yeah, so <clears throat> essentially, um, the brokers were facing higher costs um, if the clearing houses, their kind of counterparties, raised their margin requirements to protect their members uh, from, from the, the increased volatility. So the broker, Robin Hood, they don't have um, enough capital in terms of li liquidity overnight. And this was basically $5 billion an increased capital that they needed. Um, and this just got too much for them, basically. Uh, they tried to grow too quickly, uh, as we've seen with a lot of growthy tech names and deal with the consequences later. They usually have to put up one to 2% of that trade, but because of this volatility, they were having to put up five to 10% uh, of each trade with the clearing houses. Yeah, one, one of the things I saw actually late last night uh, GME surged 60% late hours. And I just saw, I think they're German listed, they're up nearly 90% now. So they've gone down 44. Now they're up you know, 70, 80% again today. Robin Hood did say last night in a statement, they would allow limited buyers of these securities, continue to monitor the situation. But presumably then more volatility is coming because this is the, the kind of tap is gonna come on and off, so to speak. Is that the way that you'd see it? Yeah, I think, look, the, the retail favorites have identified these targets and they're not, you know, particular targets. They can be anything. And like you've seen with uh, Elon Musk and people tweeting about Bitcoin and Dogecoin, it's up 800%. So these were just some of the names for, for random reasons. You know, so we mentioned some fundamental catalysts, but this volatility could flow into any, you know, pockets of the market, mainly cryptocurrency, if you think about the decentralized nature of this kind of debate. Um, so more volatility uh, is definitely uh, to come. And I think this is the key point is there's got to be a, f a consistent rule for people. You can't just say, you know, hedge funds, you are allowed to trade retail. You're not allowed to trade. Um, that's not how it should work. There should be a kind of democratic uh, approach to trading, right? It's a free market and you know some people may argue is it a free market you know when we had for example in march the fed stepping in and buying uh, backstopping the credit markets backstopping seemingly the the equity markets this is further fueling this kind of uh you know the suits uh, versus you know the average day average uh, average people uh, house prices are all-time high so the free market is really taking or the the idea of a free market mechanism is really taking uh, a bit of a, a bit of a punch and let's just remember robin hood's slogan democrat uh, democratizing finance for all uh, which is seeming pretty ironic right now um well you said it uh, but so so what big players are against this move by by robin hood yeah, so it's it's drawn uh, even uh, members like AOC um, said she would support examining a stock trading app, uh, Robinhood, 
uh, their uh, hearing against them. Uh, it's taken, uh, obviously, um, Ted Cruz also, a Republican, which has led to this kind of weird bipartisan uh, agreement that this is this shouldn't happen. Uh, and obviously, the, the names like David Portnoy uh, has obviously felt extremely strongly about this, uh, as you can imagine. And Shamath, a very famous... Yeah, uh, I, saw, I saw um, them in a, a, tw a Twitter spat with, uh, what was it, the point seventy two guy? Is it Cohen? Yeah, it's Cohen, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, this is this embodies the David versus Goliath story. Um, right. And Shamath was tweeted a very famous VC in moments of uncertainty, when courage and strength are required, you find out who the true corporatist scumbags are, which is a pretty, pretty good gauge of uh, the retail sentiment at this time. So, so one of the things here is that prior to this episode, Robin Hood was a phenomenal success by many means. This was the lower barrier to entry, fulfilling their, their company core slogan, I guess. Um, but what we've seen, as, you, as you've said as well, is that this typically then, they want to capitalize on that and they IPO, for example. Surely this is a significant bump to that ambition. Yeah, well, definitely. So um, the IPO, should have happened uh, a few months ago um, before this, before they kind of got caught, if you, if you want to call it that. Um, but this is definitely going to lead to a, a flux of people flooding out of this app um, because it's really a far reaching issue. And you've seen you know, lots of movement from Wall Street bets, from Reddit saying, look, let's, you know, let's leave Robin Hood. You know, right, so they, they become the target themselves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that it's been a really terrible uh, mm. week uh, for Robin Hood, the early investors, for example, because they were all for Democrats uh, uh, basically leveling the play playing field for, for finance and financial trading. And they've taken the complete opposite by suppressing people. So this is going to put a major spanner in the works uh, for a potential IPO, for sure. Okay, so, so I guess the biggest question now is what next? Is there something yeah, so specific... Yeah, so I think we need to definitely um, watch this situation as it uh, evolves. And let's take a look at where this kind of uh, volatility and uh, where this speculation uh, next kind of rears its head. Uh, I think um, it's going to end up in the kind of cryptocurrency markets and the decentralized finance space, uh, which some uh, people may not be too familiar with. Um, but this is a function of so many kind of social issues, so much social unrest like we've seen over the last few years. And then the kind of the action from the central banks and the governments basically just flooding the system with liquidity and this speculation and this flood of liquidity is going somewhere. And it's kind of fueled by this coronavirus, of course, and the lockdowns and these frustrations from young people, uh, particularly um, about, you know, baby, baby boomers participating in equity market rallies, house price rallies, general asset price inflation. Uh, and, you know, they, they want to get a piece of it. Um, so I, I would see that, you know, the cryptocurrencies that represent decentralized finance, basically, uh, where, where, where all this volume is going to go. Okay, cool. Well, look, we'll wrap it there. But um, as we did before, if there's any questions at all for Eddie, just drop a comment on this video. Um, look, we're here to help uh, more than anything. I think a lot what this episode definitely has has shown because there was a few private group whatsapp messages we were showing yesterday from different circles of generally young um individuals new to markets and some of the stuff we were reading was was quite frightening so we do feel a bit of a responsibility to try and act as a, a as a sounding board to just get more informed about this type of stuff and so absolutely ask any questions uh, we're both happy to help but cool thank you very much eddie Thanks, Ed. Take care.